Welcome back, everybody. We're here today, first host call of the weekend. Thanks so much for joining me. As always, each and every weekend, we're getting to about a dozen of our community's questions. Saturday, we go through about six. Sunday, about six. And always uh, in the order that they come in from stephencabral.com slash askcabral. Remember, they take about 12 weeks to be read live on air. Um, and that is simply because of the queue that gets built up. If you want your question answered, basically same day, please do feel free to submit it at cabralsupportgroup.com. Again, once again, thank you, everybody. Appreciate you. Love all the subscribes to the show, uh, the downloads, of course, and the reviews. If you haven't had a chance yet to review the show on your favorite media player, uh, we would, of course, love for you to do that and uh, subscribe to the show. All right, without further ado, let's dive in. I just opened up the Word document my team puts together for me, and it looks like the first question is from... Cairo. Uh, Cairo says, Hi, Dr. Ball. Thank you for all of the knowledge that you share. I have a question about weight training. I'm a 45-year-old male. My weight's 194, 5 foot 11. I have a fairly robust looking body torso with good muscle percentage in general, but my arms look very lean in comparison to the rest of my body. My biceps get toned fairly easily, but my triceps just won't get toned. I don't take any supplements with regards to muscle gain, but I do weight training using Y-Bell training or CrossFit-inspired exercises two times a week and soccer once a week. I go to the gym now, but I have the Y-Bells at home as well. What do you recommend I look into? Which specific exercises do you recommend me doing so my arms will be more toned and specifically the triceps and shoulders? All right, great questions. So uh, let's basically kind of look at like brass tacks, 45 years old, 5'11", 194, uh, robust, more torso, thinner arms, but toned. Triceps aren't building up as much muscle, which is the muscle on the back of the arm. Okay, so uh, first things first, when you're doing shoulder presses or you're doing chest presses, it's working the triceps as a secondary muscle group. So, of course, we want to do you know real strength training there. Um, the other part is we can do tricep-specific exercises, but we need to look at something first. One is, what's the overall body fat percentage? Because when you, when you don't see definition, it's often because for a male, they're not really between the 14 and 18% body fat. And then if you want to see basically the abs, we start to need to get to around 14% and below. So you can use any of my resources. Probably the best place to look for these resources, because they're exercise-based, is I would go to High Performance Health dot org forward slash resources and you'll be able to see body fat calipers that are very inexpensive to test there. Um, nothing wrong with Y bells. Y bells for anybody who doesn't know what a Y bell is is basically a dumbbell, but instead of a circle, it's shaped as a triangle, and they're usually fixed, um, meaning like it's twenty pounds or thirty pounds or forty pounds. They're not adjustable. And all of this is fine, but I don't know if you're going to be able to train heavy enough in order to put on enough muscle mass with the Y bells. So that they know that's part of it as well. I also believe that you'll need to train with weights more than twice a week. So, you know, twice a week might be your compound movements, uh, could be push pull days. You'll know what I'm talking about, um, Cairo. Um, you know, it might be push upper body, pull lower body you know, pull upper body, push lower body, however you want to, you know, create your splits. And then you might do one day just dedicated to shoulders and arms if that's kind of like the lagging body parts that you want to bring up. But no matter what, I think you need three days a week. Uh, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, something like that. And then not overdoing cardio, which might be hurting your gains. Need to get enough protein. Um, I talk about all this in my book, A Man's Guide to Muscle and Strength. I didn't name the book. It's for women as well. Um, My publisher named the book, but I would check it. I would check out that as well. All of those are available. Uh, well, the book's, of course, available on Amazon. Pretty much it's it's all avail- available all over the world, uh, including it was now published in Mandarin Chinese, which is pretty cool. Uh, again, I might make I might make 50 cents, maybe. Uh, if you purchase that book, uh, my publisher got a really good deal on that, and uh, I was a young author and didn't know what I was getting into. I'm glad I wrote the book, um, but... You know, I didn't write that. I didn't write that for the money. That's for sure. I don't write any books for the money, nor do I do podcasts for the money. That's not what it's about. It's about teaching. So I'm very happy that you know many people, many tens of thousands of people have have got that book. All right, Julia is up next. Hi, Doctor Ball. I was wondering what your thoughts are on the young living uh, ninja nixia. I don't know how to pronounce the word, but I know what you're talking about. Red. They claim that antioxidant drink is clinically shown to increase physical energy levels, improve sleep patterns, and reduce daily stress. It's packed with powerful antioxidants to help against oxidative stress. 
support normal cellular function, and promote healthy energy levels. Some people I know swear by it and drink it daily and add it and and wanted to know if it's a good product. Oh, it says I wanted to know. Got it. It's just obviously voice text or something. I searched the archive and couldn't find anything on it. Maybe you can do a product review. Yeah, maybe, maybe I will. You know, I might do a product review um, now that you bring it up. I never used it. I know exactly what you're talking about. It comes from Wolfberry. Uh, it's a powerful antioxidant-based berry. It's also mixed to, to make it more palatable with, I believe, cherry juice. Uh, let's see what else. Plum. There's a few others in there as well. So other, other like concentrates of juices. And so a blueberry in there, I believe, as well. And so what you're getting is a concentrate of juice from these very powerful berries or fruit. And what that is is then a very powerful antioxidant. And antioxidants help to reduce overall oxidative stress in the body. Now, it's a little over $100 for this product. It doesn't mean that you shouldn't buy it. I'm not saying that at all. I just look at things like the reason why I don't use it is because I know I won't use this ongoing. Um, there's also these types of concentrates like from mangosteen berry. Uh, there's powerful concentrates from you know other specific superfoods as well. And how I look at it is this. Like for $100 a month, I get all of the wild blueberries that you know I can get in my Wyman's Wild Blueberries. And I can add those to my smoothie on a daily basis. And that's a super high antioxidant shake as well. And then I can add the other supplements that I want. Now, again, it doesn't mean that this isn't great, but I also, if I can get them, I want the blueberries in their whole form. I get the carbohydrates that I want. I get the fiber that I want. I get the phytonutrients that are also in those skins too. So, you know, again, if it's me, it's just, again, it's, they're both powerful antioxidants. I mean, cinnamon's a powerful antioxidant, right? Coffee's a powerful antioxidant. So I get lots of antioxidants in my body. I believe it. If someone were to send me a bottle I very well may use it if, if I like it and I feel good using it. It's just nowhere near my top like even 30 nutritional supplements. So that's all. Again, no, I'm not saying it's a bad product. I think it's probably a good product, you know, as a concentrate. So no issues with it. And if people are getting results, keep on keeping on. All right, Natalia is up next. Hi, Stephen. I've been listening to your podcast for a couple months now, and they've helped me so much, and I've been implementing things as I go. I feel fantastic so far on a 14-hour fast, etc. But I would love to know how I can help my partner who has Crohn's. Well, first of all, Natalia, I'm glad that you are doing well and uh, you're doing great on that 14-hour fast. Uh, looks like your partner has Crohn's. They've had the bag for a year, had the surgery, bag was removed, but they anticipate he will have more surgery. I would love to avoid that. His diet recommendations are so different to what I know as right for most people. His diet recommended is white bread, white rice, no veggie skins, etc. Would you recommend he do a full lab test. He works all day, but he gets tired. I would love to help go feel as energetic or him feel as energetic as I feel now. Please direct me to how I can help. Thanks. Okay. So I actually have multiple shows on Crohn's, colitis, IBS, IBD, et cetera. So I would check those out for sure. And you can have him uh, listen as well because you need, you know, you need full buy-in from your partner because you, you want to help them, but you want them to help themselves in that way too. You know, the recommendation of the white bread, white rice um, is that there's nothing that would aggravate the system. That's why those things are recommended. Of course, it doesn't mean that it's healthy, but it's non-reactive to someone with Crohn's. Someone with Crohn's, you really want to run the big five plus the bacteria and parasite stool test, uh, without a doubt. If you can only run some labs, you would run the uh, big three gut bundle, and that would be your food sensitivity, your uh, bacteria and parasite stool test, and your candida metabolic and vitamins test. You got to go really gently with someone in this condition, but absolutely they can be helped. I've helped many, many people with Crohn's, colitis, and, and not just me, many practitioners have. One part of it is stress. One part of it is gut dysfunction, uh, for sure. You know, meaning like imbalances in bacteria as well as yeast, might be parasites, might be H. pylori, et cetera. All right. So both are important, stress and the gut. Uh, all of those labs, Natalia, are at stephencabral.com forward slash labs. Ideally, the big five plus the parasite, uh, bacteria and parasite stool test. If not, then let's at least run the gut bundle. Okay, Samantha's up. Hello, I listen to the podcast all the time and it has helped me so much. Thank you for sharing your wealth of knowledge with us. Thank you, Samantha. My question is, I've been told to stop taking DIM if I'm taking hormone replacement therapy. I only use the estrogen gel as I have the Mirena coil fitted for progesterone. Please tell me if this is correct. Also, please can you comment on hearing aids with Bluetooth? Are they safe? Much appreciated, Samantha. Okay, I've answered the one on hearing aids before uh, with Bluetooth. We'll talk about that. 
So, um, I, again, I have to give you my disclaimer now. I'm not here to provide you with any medical recommendations, medical treatment plans, medical cures, or medical diagnosis of any kind for any of my podcasts anywhere throughout the world, eternity. Okay, so DIM, uh, diendol methylene or methyl, uh, menthol, and why is this uh, a product? Well, we use it in our practice all the time as well. It's typically used in conjunction with I3C, indole-3-carbonol, and the reason you use them in conjunction is they, they help to remove um, used estrogen, circulating estrogen, and the conversion of extra estrogen. So we use that when estrogen levels get a bit too high. So you don't need to be taking what's called estrogen balance. That's the name of the product. You can find that at stephencabral.com forward slash shop if you want to check out the ingredients uh, to see if it matches what you're taking, Samantha. But you take that product when estrogen has become too high and you basically have estrogen dominance. Um, you don't need to take it if you have low estrogen. So hopefully that's helpful. And um, the estrogen gel in combination with the morena coil used for progesterone may be uh, a balance for you for hormone replacement therapy. The absolute only way that myself or anyone else would know, if anybody gives you an answer, they're unfortunately, I'm not telling you the truth, uh, you would never know. Like you will literally never know because it's different for every individual until you test. So what you do is you run the stress mood and metabolism test, and it gives you all of your hormones. That includes thyroid, stress, and your estrogen, progesterone, um, DHEA, testosterone, to see how they're all being affected. So that's at, well, it's at stephencabral.com forward slash labs, but you can go directly there, stephencabral.com slash hormones dash test uh, is the way to go there directly. And again, you never have to run it with my practice. You can always go to integrativehealthpractitioner.org and work with amazing level two practitioners there as well. Okay. And then, by the way, um, so then, Samantha, what it will tell you is if you're too high in estrogen or too low, too high in progesterone or too low, and then the ratio between the two. And that's, that's how you would know. All right, Anonymous is up next. Thank you for all you do. I've done a lot of work on my health, multiple um, detoxes and CBOs and heavy metal detoxes, and I take supplements, et cetera. One thing I'm working on is getting into the parasympathetic nervous system more and lowering my slightly elevated heart rate. I've listened to podcasts on this subject in your interview with Patrick McEwen on how important breathing is. It seems every time I focus on my breath, I feel more stressed. I've tried different breathing techniques, yoga, and I make sure I'm not over oxygenating. It just seems to raise my heart rate and I haven't seen the relaxing benefits even when I'm not trying to manipulate my breath and I and just move my focus to it, I feel the stress response. <clears throat> Excuse me. Any suggestion? Thanks. Yeah, it's interesting. I wasn't too dissimilar to this way back in the day, around 2004. I can remember it because I got my first apartment in Boston and I was practicing my meditation to a far greater degree at that point. And um, part of the reason was that I had uh, not saying this, this is what you have. I had dysautonomia and my diaphragm was so locked up like I couldn't relax. Like I literally couldn't do belly breathing. I was like so tight and locked up. So what I often recommend for people in this position is to use an app that includes biofeedback. So a company, uh, let's see, is it, hopefully it's over there right now. It's at highperformancehealth.org slash resources. There's a device, I have to link this up, called the Hanu device. And that is what I recommend because it has biofeedback inside of the app. It is a, uh, you can wear it 24 hours a day if you want, chest strap monitor, you can take it off anytime you want, that actually tells you when you're most stressed. And so it relies on heart rate variability, not just heart rate. And you can train your body over time to actually calm itself down. It's the best product of its kind. Patrick McEwen, whom um, I just remembered, is actually one of the founders of the company. He's at least on the advisory board. So um, it's worth checking out. I know there's a discount of some type that our community gets because I recommend it all the time. And uh, that's we'll put it at highperformancehealth.org forward slash resources, all right? So that's my recommendation. Biofeedback though. So you're not focused on your breath. You're focused only on the in, only on the out. And you're focused on an image on your screen that's either shrinking or expanding. So it takes your mind off you and puts it on a little image, a circle, and it helps to improve in that way. The Apple Watch does that too. It just doesn't track your um, HRV the same way that uh, the Hanu does. Okay. 
So you can, but again, you can use obviously what you have, like always use whatever you have. You don't have to buy more things, but I always try to try to think about like, if I can only give this person one recommendation, what's the recommendation? The other honestly is that you run the stress mood and metabolism test too, because you might have elevated levels of cortisol. And you, and I would also run the minerals and metals test because, <laughs> okay, I would run the big five. The reason is like, what if you're low in B vitamins? What if you're low in magnesium, right? What if you're high in cortisol and you're low in um, B6, like for the nervous system? It's so hard to overcome the body through the mind alone. So give your body the nutrients that it's low in and also then use the, the mind as well. And it looks like you're taking some supplements. So you might be taking already full spectrum magnesium and adrenal soothe that might be you know right for you uh, as well. So, all right, we're gonna keep it at that for today. Hopefully that was helpful. These were great questions. Tomorrow, we're gonna be getting back to five or six uh, of, your, <laughs> of the community questions. No doubt about it. Uh, really appreciate you. Thank you, like I said, for being a subscriber. Uh, appreciate you and I'll be back tomorrow. All right, take care, everybody. Thanks so much for tuning into today's show. Before you go, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I want to make sure that you're getting our daily content, not missing out on anything. Functional medicine, wellness, weight gain, weight loss, anti-aging, living longer, stronger, and all of the most cutting edge research. And if there's any topics you want to hear, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Take care.